Hi, this is Austin with Brush for Hire, and today we're going to be lighting up Games Workshop's Fortress of Redemption with Powered Play Gaming's new light kits. In this episode, we're going to be working on the floodlights at the top of the tower. So here we have one of the floodlights from the top of the tower. There are four of them. These were already assembled when I started this project, so we had to pop them back apart, so please pardon my unclean edges. But you can see that they are quite solid. They are not clear lenses, uh, but when we are done with them, they will most certainly have clear parts through which the light will shine. So here are the lights that we need to put through. Here's the connector that goes to our circuit board, and uh, we're gonna try to get a big enough hole for these things to, to really push some light out. Now I've got a drill bit that is just the right size for the interior of this piece. And so we are going to drill out the middle. I'm just sort of bearing down on this scrap piece of wood here. So this may take a minute, just be, be patient. If you need to use a pilot hole, please do that and work your way up to the bit size you need. So we do still have some of the grating from the original sort of light slats uh, on the, the front of the model here. So we're just cutting those off and scraping them down so they're good and flat. This will make a lip for us to put our lens on. So we're gonna put the the outer part of the lens, uh, this is going to be made of uh, just some plastic sheeting. I know that all of you probably have some blister pack material from one game or another, or from some packaging from some other item. So we're going to cut off a little piece of that, and we're going to use some scissors to trim this down to a circle that will fit into that lip on the front side of that light fixture. This may take a few tries, so don't, don't be discouraged. I'm sure that you can probably also find perfect little hole punches that will punch for this size, but I don't have one on hand. Uh, you may find them in the scrapbooking section of most uh, hobby stores, or craft stores rather. So, I like to trim a little bit and then see where it needs to be trimmed down more, and then trim that and keep going back and forth until we've got it. So it looks like we're good now. We've got a nice round piece that sits in there quite well. Now it is time to actually build up the, the diffusion material that we'll be using, uh, which is going to be hot glue. Now, we've got this in sort of like a little cup, and we're going to drip some of this hot glue down in there. Uh, there is such a thing as too hot here, so you may want to use a medium temperature glue. And there we go. We just don't want it to melt the plastic housing or the plastic lens that we just cut. So I'm just trying to get this to drip evenly all over the place and you may have to add a little bit more in there. I know I did a couple times. And then once you've got enough material in there and you're satisfied uh, with how how full it is, uh, just grab the drill bit that you used to cut that out. Uh, just any, any metal object or flat object that is not gonna stick to the glue. And in fact, doing this sort of sinks a lot of that heat away so that that surface dries or cools a lot faster. So there we go. Not only does that give us a quick flat surface, but it also leaves us with a nice, nice uh, diffused sort of look. So we're going to try the light out here. All right, so looking pretty good so far. And now we need to drill a hole large enough to slip the LEDs through. So we're going to start off in one of the corners here, just drill down through. And to be honest, this is a lot easier to do if you do this during the construction process, as opposed to after it's already painted. You'll just have to be careful not to paint over the clear parts that the light is coming through, which is pretty easy. Just mask it off with masking tape while you're painting. So it does not look like we're quite big enough to, to get the LED through, so just step it up to a slightly larger bit, and that should do the trick. All right, so now we've wired up the tower. We've got the LEDs coming up through the, the cavity underneath. And we're just testing to make sure all the wiring is good. Looks like we're all set. We're going to take the hot glue gun and actually just poke the hot end of it down into our hot glue lens there just to give us a little space to jam one of the LEDs. And this also is going to keep the the LED focused outward, so you don't have to worry about it rattling around inside and accidentally, you know, pointing sort of off at an angle. So there we are. And now it is time to work on the back side. We just need to cut a slit for our wires to come out of the bottom. 
Just gotta do a little bit of cable management. And this truly is quite a tight fit for this LED to fit in there. These are not huge. So, uh, in fact, you may actually want to get some plastic card tubing and actually extend the chassis of these things. It'd make it a lot easier to do, in fact. Here we are. So just clamp this together with a little bit of glue and that should be it for that. And all we have to do is glue them down in place. So we are just checking, making sure all the wiring is good, make sure we have everything connected securely. And we're just going to glue all of these guys in place now gone ahead and wired up all the rest of these light heads. Here we are. So here's what we've got. You could actually probably put a little something in the corner to plug up those holes as well if you don't like the, the look of, of that. Uh, but I do actually rather like the look of the cables, which can be painted as well so that they are not obviously real cables. And to hold the battery, I usually use a little piece of Velcro. It's a double-sided Velcro. We just uh, use a little bit of hot glue to jam it into one of the corners here, and you can just strap any old 9-volt uh, battery down or whatever you have powering this. Super easy. So let's take a look at our work here. I think it looks great, and honestly, uh, this is probably one of the more complicated processes, and it still only took about 45 minutes. So, I will leave some links in the description below for the product and Kickstarter page for these. Go check them out. Thank you for watching. Please tune in for the other episodes, and as always, happy wargaming.